All right, I want to take a closer look now at a new proposal in D.C. Long story short, taxes could be on the rise for the district's wealthiest residents. In an 8-5 to five vote yesterday, D.C. Council voting to raise tax rates on incomes above $250,000. Council members saying that this could generate around $100 million in revenue next year. That money would be earmarked for housing vouchers, tax credits for low-income families, and subsidies for daycare workers. Now, here's what it means for you. Well, if you make less than $250,000, doesn't make doesn't mean a thing for you. But single earners making between $250,000 and $500,000 a year would end up having a tax rate of about nine and a quarter percent. Right now, that tax bracket is broken up with an eight and a half percent tax rate for those making between 60 and 350, and an 8.75 percent tax rate for those making between 350,000 and a million dollars. As I said, the council passed that proposal yesterday, but it is part of a larger proposed budget that's going to face a final vote in August, and then Mayor Bowser would have to sign off on it or veto it. Joining us now to tell us more about this, what are the authors of the proposal? Councilmember Janice Lewis George of Ward 4. Councilmember, thanks so much for coming on with us tonight. Let's start with your pitch. How would the city be able to make a difference with an extra $100 million? Listen, we are in a critical moment in our city's history. You know, our communities are still reeling from a pandemic uh, that uh, in reality hit black and brown families the hardest um, and really exacerbated the stark inequalities we have in the district. Um, and this is a moment for us to not return, you know, to, to the status quo, um, but to make sure that we're making the investments that we need. Uh, through the Homes and Hearts Amendment Act that Councilmember Nadeau and Councilmember Allen and I uh, proposed, uh, we're just raising taxes on D.C.'s wealthiest residents uh, that make more than 250 a year by a little. It's a marginal tax, a marginal tax that will make a big and transformative investment, um, you know, that's worth more than 100 mil a million. We're talking about ending homelessness for 2,400 of our neighbors, a 65 million investment in housing resources. And this is coming after we've already lost 42 residents unhoused on district streets this year. We're talking about funding childcare for DC families, uh, which we know uh, has one of the, the a childcare crisis at the moment, but also making sure that our childcare workers who have been underpaid historically, uh, we're able to double their wages. Um, and the other component of this, which is, is, which is, is, is monumental, is providing a monthly basic income to working families who need it most. Um, and we are making these investments not just this year, but for every year for decades to come so they can make a lasting impact on the people of D.C. So we know that D.C. just got around two billion dollars from the federal government for the pandemic relief funding. Would it make more sense to is any of that money earmarked for any of those things that you just mentioned? It, wouldn't it be more prudent to see what that money would do first before going through and, and increasing taxes? Well, we don't need to wait on that money. A lot of that money is one-time funds. Um, and we're talking about creating a, a, a stable economy for child care, uh, for housing. And so those one, uh, one-time payments aren't going to really make a difference. Um, this is about the stability that we need. And so, um, and, and what with the pandemic, we've already seen um, how it's already impacted our community. Um, so no, uh, it, it, we, we, we shouldn't wait, we can't wait any longer um, on our unhoused residents with our childcare crisis currently uh, at the place that it is. Um, and with working families having a, a very uh, rough year uh, with the pandemic, uh, this is the way for us to create lasting effects uh, and create stability uh, at, a, at a moment that's pivotal for us um, in our city. Right, when, when you talk about this moment, I mean, we know that the, the stock market is going through wild swings. We've seen that just this week. There are fears of inflation that are being talked about constantly. It, it, raising taxes in times of economic uncertainty, it, it doesn't seem like a good bet. So if I'm a wealthy business owner, how do you justify that to me? Well, I think what's what's important to remember is that it's, this is a really small increase that will only affect about 5% of D.C. residents. Um, uh, who make more than anyone else in the city. And, and really, someone making $300,000 a year would only pay about $31.25 a month more uh, to ensure their neighbors have housing and childcare, which is the same price of, you know, a Uber Eats order, if we're being honest. Um, and so I think there's some confusion here on, on the marginal nature of it. You know, th asking for $31.25 a month more uh, uh, isn't um, isn't going to to break, break the bank at all. Right. Um, and, and the outcome Outcome is greater. Um, and I think it's also been some confusion about who's covered. And this tax increase will only impact 
individuals who make more than 250 a year, not households. Right. So, right. you know, if you and your spouse make that more than 250 combined, you'll not, you won't be affected by this. Right. Um, I want to ask you one last thing, just as, as we're running out yeah. of time here, uh, council member, you know, this would put DC up next to California and Hawaii for having the, the largest uh, marginal tax rate uh, among that income bracket. Is there a sense or a fear at all that this might discourage people from moving to DC and instead they'd settle in Maryland or Virginia? No, you know, I, D.C. residents love living in D.C. They love their neighbors. They love their community. They love the amenities here. Um, they're not going to leave because of a small tax in increase. Um, well, not necessarily people heard, leaving, but people who are coming to this area that they would potentially target Maryland and Virginia instead of coming into D.C. Well, when you look at the overall tax burden, right, D.C tax burden, we still have the lowest tax burden uh, compared to Maryland and Virginia. When you take into account auto tax and property tax, our, our burden is actually still lower than Maryland and Virginia. So that's not a concern there uh, because of, of the difference that's made between our differences in other taxes. Um, so we still hold the, the lowest tax burden in the region. Gotcha. Some great points, some great perspective. Yeah. We appreciate you coming on to share this with us tonight. Council Member Denise Lewis-George, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you.